Many fossils of ancient human species have been found in China over the last half century. Some of these fossils are easily explained and belong to the species of either Homo erectus, the Denisovans, or our own species, Homo sapiens. Then, you know, the much older archaic versions, when talking about anthropology. But there are some fossils discovered in China that don't belong in any of the three mentioned species, that are known to have inhabited China in the past. Like, for instance, the fossil found near Harbin City in northeastern China. This fossil is dubbed the Harbin Cranium, but it is better known as the Dragon Man Skull. I actually made a video on Dragon Man. I'll put it as a card in the upper right corner for you to watch if you haven't seen it already. This species did not fit the known timeline and actually changed the perspective of prehistoric human species in China. And now there are more discovered fossils that might actually do the same. My name is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you what we currently know about the latest edition of new human species discovered in China. Discovered in the Hualongdong region in eastern China, researchers unearthed the skull and lower jaw, along 15 other specimens, including leg bones, of a skeleton back in 2019. The discovered fossils are all thought to originate from the late Middle Pleistocene period that started approximately 300,000 years ago. So a team of researchers then studied the fossils and their findings were published in the Journal of Human Evolution on July 31st, 2023. So the team thought that the mandible, otherwise known as the lower jaw, was expected to be identified to a species to whom the fossils belonged to, you know, fairly quickly. But to their surprise, they were unable to do so. And this mandible was actually very unexpected. And they found out that it doesn't fit into any existing taxonomic groups. As I said at the opening of this video, many Pleistocene fossils discovered in China have been equally as difficult to classify. In the past, these fossils have usually been perceived as anomalies. However, this discovery along with some other recent discoveries in the past decade, like the earlier mentioned Dragon Man, this shows that the perception of the human evolutionary timeline and pattern, in particular in the region of China, is changing. So I personally think that it's safe to say that these fossils are not anomalies, but that they are vital to our understanding of the evolutionary timeline. So the team of researchers depended largely on a morphological analysis to be able to reach their conclusion. As most of my viewers will know by now, morphology is the study of the shape of skeletons and individual bones. Morphological research itself seems fairly simple, but it is vital for understanding the theory of evolution and the human evolutionary timeline. Subtle differences in the shapes of skeletal remains of archaic humans allow the scientists to be able to distinguish one ancient species from another. And as you can imagine, similarities in shape can point them towards ancestral species from which later versions of humans, archaic or modern, may have evolved. So the researchers in this latest study focused mostly on the peculiarities of the jawbone, the mandible. So what makes this mandible, given the name of HLD6, different from other mandibles found in the region. Let's get into it. So the mandible is similarly shaped to that of Homo sapiens, us modern humans. But it also has characteristics of the Denisovans. Like the Denisovans, the mandible, HLD6, does not appear to have a chin. It has some weakly expressed traits of a chin, but it doesn't present a true chin like we see in our own species of Homo sapiens. Like, I got a chin. Do you got a chin? So the fossil HLD6 is thought to have belonged to a child around the age of 12 to 13 years old. Unfortunately, the researchers have not yet found a skull of an adult. There are some that believe that a skull shape can change between a child and an adult. However, the researchers looked at other middle and late Pleistocene skulls of children around the same ages 
and adults of the same species and they found that the shape and the patterns remained consistent regardless of the ages of the individuals. So when the researchers were looking at the skeleton as a whole, it possesses a mixture of features never found in a hominin skeleton in East Asia or anywhere else for that matter. What most people don't know is that no hominin skull from any of the middle Pleistocene species had ever been uncovered in this part of the world before. This shows how extraordinarily fortunate the researchers were to discover this rare set of remains back in 2019. And of course, you know, this shows how incredibly important archaeological excavations are, as you might just stumble upon a previously unknown species that has to fit somewhere into our human evolutionary timeline that changes everything. Even if that placement, and this is not necessarily the case here, this is just good information to share. Even if that placement is like a side branch that eventually died off or had little to no effect on the evolutionary timeline as a whole, it's still vital to understand how species evolved over the millennia. So the researchers believe that the Hualongdong fossils are the earliest fossil population known in Asia to present this particular mosaic of primitive and homo sapien-like features. So the researchers theorize that HLD6 must belong to a classification that hasn't yet been named and that some modern human characteristics could have been present as early as 300,000 years ago, long before the emergence of Homo sapiens in Asia, as this is actually around the same time when Homo sapiens first emerged in Africa at Jabeli Root, where they originate from, as we Currently, no, but they might have originated somewhere else. We just don't know yet because we haven't found any older fossil remains of Homo sapiens. But due to this discovery, it seems that hominins with similar features as Homo sapiens had been in the region of China long before this. And this reveals one of the most significant parts of this discovery. This means that certain physical characteristics that were believed to originate with our own species of Homo sapiens actually predate the appearance of Homo sapiens in Africa. Because when Homo sapiens arrived in the region of China some 120,000 years ago, these traits in the morphology were already present in other hominin species living in the area. So this does mean that Homo sapiens and the currently unknown hominin species that we have now discovered must share a common ancestor that possessed these morphological features long before either species emerged. So now that the child currently identified as HLD6 is linked to a whole new type of ancient human, the evolutionary scientists all around the world will be taking a much closer look at the currently unidentified Pleistocene hominin bones uncovered during other excavations around the world in the past. These researchers will have to study these bones to see if they might belong to this newly discovered species, as it is unknown if this species was located solely in the Hualongdong region or if they branched out much further like we have seen with other archaic hominin species. And of course, other evolutionary scientists, not part of the current research team, will have to study the fossilized remains found in Hualongdong to confirm the astonishing conclusions of the Chinese scientists about HLD6 being part of a new species. If they confirm HLD6 to be a new species, the newly discovered species will then be given its official name. So what do you think of this latest discovery? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you do not receive notifications on your phone, make sure to turn all notifications on in the app and have the YouTube notifications turned on on your phone in your app settings. Otherwise, you simply don't get notified. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click a link in the description down below or click a video in the end card. 
And I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. It truly means the world to me and I can't thank you enough. I'm eternally grateful. And this was this short video of a new species in China that we don't have a name for yet. And I'll be back next week with a new video. Bye guys. Thank you.